Hello, YouTubers. Dave Soriano with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Western Pennsylvania, USA. And uh, my current research interest focuses on the chemistry involved in uh, art. And the relationship between chemistry and art goes back to at least the cave art uh, done by Neanderthal and Homo sapiens. And it's been found in France and Spain and Italy. And indeed, the chemical industry actually started in the 19th century with Perkins' discovery of synthetic purple. That was the beginning of the chemical industry to produce paints. And um, of course, a dye is soluble in a solvent like water or alcohol. A pigment is not. Well, anyway, this is a very brief PowerPoint uh, presentation. We'll follow it up with a very extensive video which will show the details of the current research I'm conducting. I'm here at school today in my office. So I want to show you this PowerPoint slide presentation and uh, hopefully this will give artists some ideas and even chemistry professors uh, may very well want to uh, employ some of these techniques in a chemistry laboratory. Remember uh, the forensics of art, uh, the uh, ability to detect uh, forgeries, restoration, the effects of pollution on uh, artwork in museums, uh, galleries. It's a very, very important field. And uh, really, uh, the hallmark of the Homo sapiens is uh, the understanding and importance of art and music. That defines the, uh, the species, in my opinion. Well, anyway, let me call up the PowerPoint slides and we'll get started. I'll go to full screen. And it's just a, a light uh, way uh, for us to um, show you what I'm up to in my uh, research. Okay, thank you for your patience. Novel paint formulation for artists. What we're going to show you here is a paint formulation that I've uh, developed recently. I've been working in this area now for uh, about a year and a half and I enjoy it thoroughly. And what I want to do is be able to show you a paint formulation that can be used by artists uh, throughout the world and uh, very easy to get up and running. And I would love to be able to see some of you uh, reproduce this and utilize it in your artwork. I'm a self-trained artist. I've never had any formal training, but uh, artwork painting is a very important part of my life. And uh, to be able to combine chemistry and art is a, just uh, a wonderful thing. Okay, what we're gonna show you here, uh, novel paint formulation for artists, emulsified renewable petrolatum. Petrolatum is uh, basically uh, petroleum jelly uh, Vaseline um, and um, a material that has been used for a long, long time, different applications, including medical applications. Uh, what I'm doing here, however, is not using petrolatum from petroleum, but uh, developing synthetic petrolatum from uh, renewables. And um, it's emulsified, as I'll show you, and uh, thus it's very compatible with any commercial watercolors, gouache, uh, or oil-based uh, paints, or you can even take pigments or dyes. And in the case of pigments, I'll show you, you can mull in the conventional, traditional way or uh, melt it up in this vehicle. Uh, here's contact information, and please make note if interested in my website. And there you can find many more details uh, of what I'm up to so far, and I usually upload daily. Uh, so here, this will be a short PowerPoint slide, as I mentioned, and it will have a good quality video uploaded in a few weeks. Uh, any details that you need on the synthetic petrolatum that I'm developing, you can find that at my website. There's a post there which will give you some information, and you may even want to experiment uh, and vary it. To give you a general idea, just a rough, rough idea, uh, I'm looking at some notes here. For example, I can take a quarter of a cup, that's about 60 milliliters of coconut oil, and I mix that up with uh, about two or three tablespoons of beeswax, 
and uh, you would heat this up. I use heating pans, uh, heating trays. Uh, in the chem lab, uh, I can use uh, um, heaters, but uh, generally I use these heating trays. It's very convenient if you're working at home or in a studio. And uh, along with the coconut oil and beeswax, I would add then about uh, an eighth of a cup, 30 milliliters of linseed oil, of course a drying oil. Uh, it's been used for centuries. It doesn't really dry, it doesn't lose water. It's simply on exposure to oxygen in the air polymerizes. And uh, I use about 30 milliliters of linseed oil. If you want a formulation that is going to dry over days or weeks, then use linseed oil. If not, you can use um, uh, some other oil. You can use uh, even uh, castor oil, vegetable oil, mineral oil. Then it wouldn't be renewable, uh, would it, if you use mineral oil? But along with the 30 milliliters of linseed oil, I add 30 milliliters of castor oil. I've had good success with this. Um, and I put in uh, generally uh, a teaspoon of lanolin. Lanolin is a wax and it's produced by wool bearing animals, wool producing animals like sheep. And if they reintroduce the woolly mammoth, I think there'll be a glut of lanolin on the market. Well, anyway, as I'll show you, I modify the lanolin, but you don't have to do that. You can simply add the lanolin. And um, I find that that uh, is a really nice additive. And then you take that whole mixture and you warm it up until it melts. Stir it until it melts. And then you can pour it into pans. And now you have a petrolatum, which can be used as a vehicle in this paint formulation. So go to my website if you need more information. Okay, now what you see in this slide, um, up the upper right would be conventional lanolin, which I obtained from Fisher Scientific. And what I do is in the laboratory, I take the lanolin and I heat that up to about 160 degrees Celsius for about three hours. And I react it with a chemical called trimethylol propane. And what that does under acidic conditions, I use an acid catalyst, uh, transesterification occurs. And that converts uh, a lot of the lanolin esters into the new esters derived from the uh, trimethylol propane, a very common material used. It has uh, three primary alcohol groups. Transesterification occurs. The important thing is that it releases the fatty alcohols of natural lanolin, and that uh, is known to produce a very fine emulsifying system, which is very important in this uh, formulation I'm describing to you today. Now, you don't have to do that. You can just use the lanolin, but I uh, generally will blend some of this modified lanolin. That's what you see on the left when it cools after a few hours. And it's a smoother, softer material than lanolin. Uh, and in fact, if you pick it up with a spoon, it'll flow at room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. It'll flow right back into that cup. It does have color, but it doesn't seem to be a problem when you make the petrolatum. And um, when uh, I'm, of course, generating newer generations of petrolatum, and uh, I won't use the lanolin, I will actually use uh, this modified lanolin, which has increasing, uh, uh, ability to emulsify. And there in the bottom, you see a couple of pans of a typical synthetic, uh, synthetic petrolatum. Uh, forgive me too, I notice I misspelled material, but that really isn't going to be the end of the world for us here. Um, here, uh, what you see in that green vial on the right, you can't see the material, but that is linseed oil that I've also reacted in transesterification with acid catalyst. And uh, the details are at my website. And that is important because that produces a linseed oil monoester, monoglyceride. And they are known to have very, very interesting surfactant emulsifying properties. It's a non-ionic surfactant. And indeed, if you use commercial oil-based paints and artwork, they really don't use linseed oil per se anymore, you know. What you have in there are these modified linseed oils with faster drying times. 
So uh, that material I also use in my newer generation uh, synthetic petrolatum uh, because I know that that will have increased uh, emulsifying properties and faster drying times. The details are at the website. And there you can see uh, I took a green commercial uh, inexpensive gouache paint watercolor with usually marble calcium carbonate added or clay gouache familiar to artists and uh, I blended that together with the petrolatum and applied it a swatch to 140 pound uh, cardstock and I used both uh, flat brushes and bristle brush brushes I like the bristle very much and of course if you want to uh, increase the viscosity of the petrolatum just vary the components you're using sometimes I even now add uh, castor wax derived from hydrogenation of castor oil. It's a very hard wax. You can use carnauba wax. You want to uh, experiment, and artists usually are not shy about doing that. Ah, here we see uh, earth pigment, yellow ochre, used by the cave artists. And uh, what I did was I took uh, yellow ochre, iron oxide, and I molded it in the conventional uh, approach with mortar and pestle with some of the synthetic petrolatum. I mold it up and applied it to the cardstock. And on the right, it's very hard to pick this up, but if you amplify this image, you may see it with this lighting. On the right, um, that is the paint formulation uh, applied to the cardstock. But on the left, I added Halloysite, H-A-L-L-O-Y-S-I-T-E. Halosite, uh, which is a kaolin clay. And I obtained it courtesy of a company in Idaho, USA. And I have found if I use that, if I add that halosite, uh, maybe 15% by mass to the paint formulation, I have found that it applies very smoothly with no streaks. So this is a very interesting point that I've relayed to the company, uh, the quarry in Idaho, to let them know. And incidentally, halloysite is a very unusual kaolin family member. It is a natural nanotubular material. It has very interesting three-dimensional properties. And I've already let them know that when I apply this uh, as an additive, I get a very smooth application off brush now, that's your first method, mulling in the conventional sense, and here using yellow ochre with the petrolatum, and it molds beautifully. No grinding hard, it just now, granted, yellow ochre is a very, very easy pigment to mull, but it just molds beautifully with this petrolatum, and uh, it's a very, very good way to do this if you don't want to heat anything up. Uh, here, I used uh, tempera, uh, tempera, that's poster paint, very cheap paint, normally used in water. You know, it has uh, gluten, uh, glutinaceous materials added, and tempera is a very, very cheap poster paint. It's one of the biggest uh, sellers in the world, actually, this poster paint. It's cheap, and I used a powder. There you can see I'm using uh, Rich Art Fresco Powdered Tempera. And uh, I buy it uh, in the containers. Uh, generally, you can get a pound at a time. Now, you can grind up earth pigments. Uh, certainly, you can use mica powder uh, pigments. But I generally uh, buy it a pound at a time on eBay. And generally, you mix that up with water. But here, I'm just mulling it. And it's fine. It's a, it will give you a very, very interesting material. I have found that when I apply this to cardstock foundation, that it's dry to the touch in a day and as the linseed oil the modified linseed oil component uh, dries then you will get a very nice uh, very very nice uh, surface and you can do impasto uh, you can just add more calcium carbonate or clay or talcum and uh, you can do beautiful impasto technique with this paint formulation now the second method uh, and this is the one I prefer, 
Um, I use, a, uh, here I'm using just a, a hot plate. Uh, I buy and use uh, these trays, heating trays that people use to keep food warm. I get them at the local Walmart. And uh, we do encaustic painting here too, the ancient Greek, Egyptian, Roman technique of molten wax. So we use those trays, but that's another story. But here, uh, what I'm doing is melting the petrolatum. Now, when I first make the petrolatum, when I blend everything together, I bring that up to about 95 degrees Celsius and I stir it until it's all uniform and melted. And then I put it in a blender for two or three minutes cool it down to uh, about uh, 50 degrees Celsius and pour it into pans. This is all at my website. Um, here, uh, I'm taking the petrolatum and I'm bringing it up to about 70 degrees Celsius and uh, stirring with the addition of an orange tempera powder and it blends beautifully. And uh, then after you melt that up with good stirring, you just uh, can pour that right into pans. This particular orange powder is sold by Jack uh, Richardson and uh, company, and I buy it on eBay. Uh, I get it about seven, eight dollars a pound, but you can use the mica powders or just do uh, pigments, uh, earth pigments, uh, grind and crush rock. The first method of mulling is okay, but it's a more difficult cleanup. You're gonna to have to wipe out all that material. Um, and uh, I, I find it's just a lot messier, but if you don't wanna heat up, then you go with that method, uh, mortar and pestle. Now, the second method I greatly prefer, and you can see with a, uh, I'm using a popsicle stick, uh, the second method at 70 degrees, that pigment and petrolatum will blend beautifully. You're not gonna find it sinking to the bottom, you know, and not mixing. It's mixing beautifully. And that's about ready to pour. I'm using a little Demitas uh, China cup. And uh, the cleanup is very easy, very safe, very easy. Pour and cool. And I'm putting it right into a plastic container uh, that I get at the local dollar store. Keep stirring it up nicely until it cools down and forms a beautiful uh, orange colored petrolatum ready to use in paintwork. There's the cleanup of the cup. Uh, what I do while it's still a little bit warm, I add some soap and water, clean it out, and very, very easy to clean up. And on the right, you have your paint formulation ready to be used. When you're not using it, keep it covered because there's linseed, modified, modified linseed oil in there, which is gonna polymerize and uh, you just keep it covered. And uh, you may also want to add some uh, additive. Now I use this halocyte, but you may not be able to find halocyte mineral. Now what to do? Just use kaolin, uh, benthenite clay, calcium carbonate. Here I'm using talcum and uh, add some talcum powder until you get the thickness desired. If you're gonna do impasto, use more of the talcum and it mixes beautifully. So um, uh, I will have an up, uh, a video uploaded and uh, I'm focusing mostly on the use of uh, commercial oil-based paints in this medium uh, with petrolatum, but you can certainly use a range of materials. I've used gouache, I've used watercolor, but I like the oil-based and I really wanna focus on the tempera uh, paint pigments because they are cheap. Okay, if you need to get a hold of me, find me at the website. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.